Welcome back to Channel Time Pod. It's your host, Red. I got a video today from Cher Sparkler. It, 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 his, this was Mr. Genius's or Sir Genius's channel. He just changed the like the, the channel name. So uh, I have featured him before. He's doing better. Uh, he's at 121 now. Let's, let's give him some more support. Let's get him to at least a couple hundred guys so he can get, get, get on his way to being monetized. Please like and subscribe down below. I really appreciate that. Let's get to that chow. It's chow time. The reason I think, man, we don't do it anymore because you guys don't respect us anymore. Okay. Second, you guys don't need us anymore. I don't need it, man. Sitting out here struggling to get this in my car. Men are walking back and forth. No one is trying to help me. It's but why should they? And why would they even want to? After all, women have been telling men over and over again to leave them alone. Women are independent. They don't need men. And now some are complaining when men are actually listening to them help anymore they rush and sit down on trains and buses before women and pregnant women and elderly are sitting down it's just a hot mess out here but yeah in my opinion the whole treat a woman like a woman just because she's a woman that's over yeah certainly in my life is over because i'm not gonna treat some feminist who probably hates men oh and by the way specifically straight white men i'm not going to all of a sudden treat her so nicely or treat her like a woman or treat her like a lady when she's this boss babe don't need no man straight white man male privilege anti-male misandrist no thanks oh, man. because saying something like that is a very clear message to most men that one doesn't even want them around yet at the same time one is expecting those same men no, he's using clips from Nate's Ace Nate. Shout out to Ace Nate too. So to protect you, Me Too movement is full of liars and people who try to use the system to gain and make money off of the men they're accusing. And also, what did you think was going to happen? You create this movement of feminism that pretty much domesticates men and tells them that they need uh, approval and consent from everything they do. They are to walk on eggshells around women. They are oppressors. They are toxic. What did you think was going to happen? Like, did they really not see this coming? That guy was speaking facts. Have you ever seen he those was. videos? And I'm going to speak to New York City. I, I come from New York City. Have you ever seen those videos that pop up from the subway where you'll see a woman being harassed on the subway by I don't know who? And there's a bunch of guys just sitting there watching and they don't do anything about it. Yeah. What do you think is causing that trend, particularly in cities like New York City and Los Angeles among men? I think this whole teaching boys that they're equal to women and women that they're equal to boys doesn't help. I think that uh, men, by and large, and this if anybody, if any man hears this and isn't just upset, I don't know what you are then, because men are just weaker than we were before, statistically speaking. This is out oh, when you go to a bar. Who's supposed to buy women drinks? Men are. Do you see that as often as? You like years and years ago all, all costs i get all that man to protect even that, when blah, girls blah, blah, blah. are fighting with each other like it is so ugly it is the ugliest thing that there is men around and they're not doing anything but why do you think men don't do that anymore because they used to do that before but why do you think they don't do that anymore they stopped doing that why do you think you're a man <laughs> you tell me first of all good uh -huh. question the reason i think men we don't do it anymore because you guys don't respect us anymore Okay. Second, you guys don't need us anymore. I don't need it, man. <laughs> I'm a strong woman, independent. You're the independent, you're strong. What do you need me for? What do you complain to me not protecting when you already have everything that you want? I'm a bum. <laughs> what do you need me for? I think. Why are men less inclined to help modern women? Isn't it a paradox in our so called progressive society? It's a question that often lurks in the corners of our collective consciousness, but rarely sees the light of day. We live in an era that champions equality and empowerment, yet we find a peculiar trend emerging. Men, it seems, are less likely to extend a helping hand to women. What's causing this shift? Let's delve into the reasons behind this perplexing behavior. Modern feminism. It's a term that has gained much traction in the last few decades, but how does it affect men's willingness to help women? In a society where gender roles and expectations are constantly evolving, the impact of modern feminism is profound. This social and political movement has brought about significant changes in how we perceive men and women. However, it's also had some unintended consequences. One of the more striking manifestations of modern feminism is the rise of statements like, I don't need no man, or F all men. 
These phrases off. Not even just that. There's like end all men too. That's the scary part, right? Like that these women really think that if they just destroyed all men, that everything's gonna be happy go lucky. You know, there's no bad women that are gonna mistreat other women, and that men deter that. Mm. Often used as rallying cries, are intended to empower women and promote self-reliance. But they can also have a discouraging effect on men who might otherwise be inclined to help women. Imagine you're a man hearing these phrases. They convey a message of rejection, a dismissal of your worth and potential contributions. It's not hard to see how this could make men less inclined to help women, even in situations where help might be needed or appreciated. I, I even talk to you guys now about it. Like, I think it's horrible that us men do not want to help women and it's not really women it's just people that are weaker than us in society that's how i kind of see it it just happens to be mostly women that are the weaker ones but it, men should be stepping up and you know helping defend the weaker but i'm not i don't even advocate for that why because i know the risks involved for us men to do so that's the sad part I I disagree with us not helping, but I can't in the right mind agree to tell you guys to help because there's more loss for us than any type of gain or any type of anything just to help people. It's so sad nowadays where before these type of men were celebrated. These type of men had no issues. They saw something, they were going to step in and stop it. And, it, and it, the great thing was, it was a group of men. Say 10 men were walking around, saw something bad. It didn't have to be a woman. It could be some guy beating up a homeless man. And most of the time, most men would step in and stop that shit. Nowadays, there's nothing. Men are not willing to help weak people that are weaker than them anymore. And that creates a very, very dangerous society. This disconnect is not just a matter of hurt feelings or bruised egos. It impacts how men and women interact on a daily basis. It influences the willingness of men to assist women, not out of... I mean, look at, you know, Me Too has destroyed so much to the point where we don't even want to help them with their careers. They could be our co-workers that need help, but we don't even want to talk to them because we're scared of the repercussions of some of the bad women that have kind of ruined everything for other women. Isn't that crazy that so many bad women have ruined womanhood or just women in general? Now all men, really? I wouldn't say we hate women, but we really dislike a lot of the actions that women do. And it, and it makes us less willing to even, for one, say anything about it. Because you know what? Fuck you. If you're going to fucking do your stupid shit, just go fuck off and, you know, fuck your own life up. We're not going to even stop you anymore. You know, where men before did our best to help women not fuck themselves over. Now women just want to fuck themselves over. And men are like, all you ladies. Out of a sense of obligation or superiority but out of a genuine desire to help. So it's not just about the phrases themselves, it's about the attitudes they represent and the impact they have on society's perceptions and behaviors. If we want to foster a culture of helping and support, we need to be mindful of the messages we're sending, both explicit and implicit. So it seems that the very movement that aims to empower women is creating a rift between the genders. Equality, it's a term we all strive for, but does it always play out fairly? No, Let's delve into will. this tricky terrain of selective equality. It's a term that describes a situation where the pursuit of equality is not consistent, but rather, selective. Some women demand equal rights only when it suits them, and this has created a bit of a conundrum for men. Imagine being in a chess game where your opponent changes the rules halfway through. At first it's all about equal opportunities, equal chances, and equal risks. But suddenly, when it's convenient, the game changes to I don't need no man or F all men. It's like being in a game where the goalposts keep shifting. It's not that men don't believe in equality. On the contrary, most men champion the idea of a world where everyone, regardless of gender, has equal rights and opportunities. Damn right. 
This is why we built society. You know, to give everybody somewhat of equal opportunity. Yes, there are the top that get way more opportunity than others, but at least they made it so not only the top eat everything, like in a lot of communist countries. So, However, it's this selective application of equality that can be a bit discouraging. It's akin to being told, I want you to treat me as an equal, but only when it's beneficial to me. Mm -hmm. You see, this selective equality dilemma can create a sense of confusion and hesitation in men. Should they extend help to a woman who asserts her independence fiercely one moment and then expects chivalry the next? It's a bit like walking on eggshells, isn't it? Moreover, it's not just about the inconsistency. This selective pursuit of equality can also lead to a sense of imbalance. It's like being in a tug of war where the other side lets go of the rope when it's convenient for them, leaving you to topple over. In essence, the selective pursuit of equality can inadvertently discourage men from extending help. It's not about the lack of desire to help, but rather the fear of doing the wrong thing. There we go. He's right. We all have the desire. I told you. I mean, it's it's true. We are. It's built into us as men that want to help women and just weaker beings. It's just built into us. But we have to override this programming that is innate into men because of the repercussions of helping. We don't want to lose our livelihoods. We don't want to get shot. We don't want to go to jail. We don't want to do all these things just because we were trying to help someone. We don't want to ruin our own lives. Men are left wondering, should I help or should I respect her independence? Thus, the selective pursuit of equality seems to be another factor contributing to the reluctance of men in helping women. Let's talk about gratitude, or rather, Ooh. the lack of it. Picture this, a man lends a hand, helps out, goes out of his way, only to be met with indifference or worse, ungratefulness. This scenario- You know what, when you like do something and you're like, yeah, you, yeah. that's what you're supposed to do. God, that irks me so hard when I hear shit like that when it's out in public. It's like, oh, that's what you're supposed to do for me. Fuck you. No, isn't uncommon. And it's enough to make anyone think twice about extending their kindness in the future. We can't ignore the fact that gratitude is a two-way street. It is? It's the fuel that keeps the engine of goodwill. You know how many men keep the door open for me? Quite a few. A lot of men keep the door open for me, as I do for them. Because there's still good men out there, and guess what I do? Thank you, sir. Tell people thank you, guys. Like, when you open the door and keep the door open for someone and they don't say anything... Yeah, some of you guys might not feel anything or feel a way about it. But when you hear a thank you, you're like, oh, fuck, you're welcome, brother. You know, when you hear a thank you, you get that sense of, oh, they appreciate it. You know, that's wonderful. You know, just a slight sh showing of appreciation. Men, as men, we eat it up. We love it. Running. When someone helps us. Acknowledgement and appreciation are the least we can offer in return. Yep. But in many situations today, men find themselves on the receiving end of a lackluster thank you or no acknowledgement at all. Now let's be clear, we're not saying that men help with the expectation of praise or reward. But a little appreciation goes a long way in fostering positive interactions. It's human nature to want to feel valued and respected. So, when men continually face a lack of appreciation, it's no surprise they may become less inclined to help out. This lack of gratitude isn't just about saying thank you. It's about recognizing the effort, time, and sometimes even personal sacrifice that someone has made to assist. It's about acknowledging that they didn't have to help but they chose to. And when this recognition is missing, it can feel like a slap in the face. Right? That's a good point. Remember, they didn't have to do these things. They chose to. They chose to be a good gentleman. They chose to keep the door open. They chose to do these things. Not everybody chooses these things. This is why gratification, I mean, you know, being grateful for them choosing to do something out of their way to help you out, even if it's just holding the goddamn door. You know, like, they didn't have to do that. Imagine how discouraging it can be to offer assistance, only to feel unappreciated or even disrespected. Over time, this can lead to a sense of disillusionment, creating a barrier that makes men hesitant to step forward in the future. 
After all, why put yourself out there if your actions are likely to go unnoticed or unappreciated? The issue here is not about seeking validation or fishing for compliments, it's about fostering a culture of appreciation, where each act of kindness is acknowledged and valued. You know, when I was younger, this was the norm. When I was a kid, everyone acted this way. Everyone kept doors open for people. Everyone genuinely helped people. That's crazy how from what I'm 30 now, 37. So like what in 30 years, guys, like maybe less. It went from a very helpful society. We cared about people. We held doors for people. People said thank you to now. People are resenting people for holding the door. People expect you to do things and, you know, resent you for doing certain things. It's just like, what the fuck? It's about creating an environment where people feel motivated to help, not discouraged or belittled. Damn right. Indeed, the lack of appreciation seems to be another significant factor in this issue. No good deed goes unpunished sounds a bit harsh, doesn't it? it? Does. But sometimes that's exactly how it feels. Let's delve into the heart of the matter, the fear of misinterpretation. Picture this, a man offers to help a woman, perhaps by fixing a flat tire or carrying a heavy box, his intentions are pure, just to lend a helping hand. But instead of receiving appreciation, he finds himself on the receiving end of a suspicious glare, or worse yet, labeled as a creep. Mm. This isn't an isolated incident. Men across the globe are finding themselves in similar situations. They are being falsely accused or misunderstood for their acts of kindness. And these allegations and that's that's crazy right because women want men to be chivalrous and want us to do all these things and when there's a chivalrous man that does these things he's a creep we can't win patients aren't just embarrassing they can cause serious harm ruining reputations straining relationships <laughs> and even leading to legal troubles it's a precarious tightrope to walk on one side, there's the inherent desire to be helpful, to be a gentleman, to extend that helping hand when someone is in need. On the other side, there's the fear of misinterpretation, the anxiety that their intentions might be misconstrued, and the worry about the potential backlash. And it's not just about the fear of false allegations, it's also about the fear of crossing invisible boundaries. In today's world where everyone is hyper aware of personal space and consent, Offering help can sometimes be seen as an intrusion. Men are often left wondering, will my offer of help be seen as an encroachment? Will I be perceived as overstepping? This fear of misinterpretation, coupled with the lack of appreciation we discussed earlier, often leads to a reluctance to offer help. It's a protective measure, a way to avoid potential discomfort or conflict. But this doesn't mean that the desire to help has disappeared, it's just been overshadowed by the fear of the consequences. Damn. That hit home. The desire to help did not go away. It really didn't. I, I, I genuinely want to help people. I genuinely like holding the door for people, men or women. It didn't matter to me, even kids, right? It, it's something kind of innate in me to want to do. But yes, I have to literally fight that innate fear because, or fight that innate action because I fear I, it might be misconstrued. Isn't that shitty? Thus, the fear of misinterpretation adds another layer to this complex issue. It's not just about the changing dynamics of gender roles or the rise of feminism. It's about the fear of misunderstanding, the fear of crossing boundaries, and the fear of facing undeserved repercussions for an act of kindness. So, we've explored the various factors that can discourage men from helping women in our modern society. Let's take a brief trip down memory lane to recap what we've discussed. We began with the impact of modern feminism, some modern feminists have adopted phrases like, I don't need no man or F all men, which can create a sense of animosity and discourage men from offering help. We then delved into the issue of selective equality, the idea that some feminists may only advocate for equality when it suits them. This can lead to a perception of double standards, further dissuading men from stepping in. Next, we touched on the lack of appreciation often experienced by men who do help. The absence of a simple thank you can make a man question whether his assistance is valued or even wanted. Lastly, we address the fear of misinterpretation. In some instances, good deeds have been twisted into accusations or misread as creepy advances, making men wary of lending a hand. 
These are complex issues with deep societal roots. However, acknowledging them is the first step towards progress. By understanding these factors, we can work towards bridging the gap and fostering a more supportive and understanding society. Ooh, that was damn good, chow. Sir Genius. Or, I don't know what you want me to go by your, your new name. I'm just keep on calling you Sir Genius. Because that was what I'm used to. Great video, brother. That was a really awesome video. And a shout out to Ace Nate. You used uh, some of his uh, videos in the beginning. And you did a very good segment of, you know, the, the auto words thing. Great script. I loved it. This is probably one of your better videos for sure, brother. Please subscribe down below. I really appreciate it. Catch you guys next time. Ciao.